All right, here we are again, guys. It seems like I've made this exact video before, three or four times now, actually. Amazon Game Studios New World has been delayed yet again, this time for the shortest period yet, moving the release date back from the 31st of August until September 28th. I'm going to be using this video to go over my thoughts on the delay, my feelings about the game after having played more, watched more content, and had more time to digest. Now, New World for me is a very weird game and experience to talk about because... There are aspects to this game that really draw me in and give me that feeling I haven't had in an MMO for a good long while. The feeling that makes me want to play the game and really disappoints me that it isn't out yet. But then again, on the other hand, the game has so many problems that I don't think are going to be addressed within the next two months, one of which being the additional time that they've given themselves with this delay. I talked about this game for the last two years on my channel about how it wasn't ready and how many issues the game has had and the developers have done a good job they've managed to address almost all of those issues besides a few that we're going to talk about in a little while but in doing so they've exposed some of the other issues the game has and i do not think these things will be fixed in just two months time so this makes the delay seem superficial and while i can give them all the credit in the world because they have honestly surpassed my expectations in what was actually possible over the last year in not only adding content but also making massive fundamental changes to the game that make sense and make the game better for the type of game it's trying to become but this additional time just an extra month and then obviously that means two months because we had time before it was going to release i don't think that's enough time to make a difference to what's really going to matter to the success of new world so how I've had to think about New World is that they're going to launch with a game that is foundationally solid in terms of what they want the game to be and perhaps will be one day, but it's going to be launching with some severely impeding problems baked into that foundation and how or if they will address these and how long it's going to take and how much better it's going to become in two months until launch, we're going to have to wait and see. One thing I will say that has surprised me and is honestly a great sign, it shouldn't really be because companies should do this by default, but they've delayed this game so many times despite the fact that they're going to get a lot of shit for it from players because consumers are greedy, they're selfish, they want the things as soon as possible. And I understand this. I, th I think there's an element of it's entirely fair and understandable to be disappointed. But the ultimate reality is that if the game's going to be as good as it needs to be to actually have longevity and do well, the game needs more time, probably more time than they're giving it this time around as well. So I do think it's fine to be disappointed, but the minute that turns from disappointment to like hate or anger or anything like that, you really just need to take a step back and understand this game needs to do well both for us and for Amazon. It has to do well because it's a brand new company in the space, investing billions of dollars into our still relatively niche genre that other Western companies aren't doing. It's a new game and we need it to succeed so we can get more of that from more of these companies. Amazon need this to be a success for the same reason and also because they've had a games division now for over five years and it's been an unmitigated disaster. The releases that they've had have been a few mobile games no one's ever heard of. They've cancelled every in development in production game or pulled them from the stores that they were sold on in record time. Released games out of beta and then pulled it back into beta and then cancelled them. And then you've also seen articles circulating around from people like Jason Schreier talking about how bad the management of the game development studios are and that the engine that they're forced to use is actual garbage that nobody likes to develop in. So what Amazon Game Studios have right now is New World, and then an unannounced sci-fi MMORPG that's been led by your main man John Smedley, and that's publicly all we know about, so New World has to do well, and it's already had a ton of money pumped into it both for marketing and development. And that's the credit I'm going to give the New World team and the Amazon executives that are overseeing this project for allowing them to make these delays. I've seen the millions of views that New World videos have gotten from ads being run on Twitch specifically. I've seen the Reddit ads, the ad posts on social media, the content creator marketing campaigns and the numbers they've offered, certain content creators for sponsorships. They've done all that and they're still willing to push the launch of their game yet again. That shows they're committed to making sure this game launches properly and combine that with all the changes that they've made over the last year or so. I have to believe that they will eventually get this game to the place it needs to be because they seem to be really making an effort to do so, which is rare and something we should commend. My first impressions of the game and after playing more are conflicting. I absolutely love this game, I'm going to be honest with you. I think they absolutely nail certain MMORPG elements. The world is amazing. The scenery, the exploration, the music, the UI, and then the idea of what the crafting and combat can be. They're great, despite the implementation being lacking in areas. The game lacks PvE content, the PvP isn't as coherent as it needs to be, and that comes from not only systems and a lack of time spent on making those systems and content surrounding them, but from the core aspects of how they work. 
So let's go over real quick the main issues that I have with New World, in my opinion, and why this game, if it still launches in 2021, could be a quick burn of playtime before you leave for a few months and come back to hopefully a more polished game experience that just builds upon what they already have and fixes some of the issues that they've currently shown us. So the networking, the servers, the optimization, the general performance of the game just isn't good. It, it's just not good. The desync, the hit registration, delays, server crashes, queues, everything related to how the game performs just isn't as good as it needs to be and what we should expect. It got worse over the course of the test before it got better. The engine performance in terms of how it feels to play the game ranges from, okay, this is, this is all right, this is fine, to what the fuck is going on, how is this a AAA product? That's something that I'm not sure how or if they can fix, if it's an engine problem, if it's their servers interacting with the engine. I don't have the solution or the idea of how to fix it, but it's one of those things that is so crucial that it needs to happen. Otherwise, it's just going to be like, maybe you can accept it and have fun with it. But it's one of those where you sat playing it and you're like, okay, this is fucking grinding on me. This is frustrating me the more that I play. Combat needs to be reworked in some ways, specifically the PvE combat and the AI of creatures, plus the variety of experiences. For now, you play the game for a few hours, and you've experienced most of the PvE experiences you're going to have for most of your gameplay time. Almost all enemies of the same variant play the exact same way. The AI is just scripted terribly, it's abusable. The game starts out with a slight learning curve to the difficulty, which is fun, but once you get any form of competent handle on the fighting system and what enemies do, which you will do because most enemies are identical in the way that they operate, you will find it's too easy. And since enemies are so similar to the point of being seemingly identical to each other, you hit the ceiling very, very early on into the game, which is obviously a problem with the AI and how few creatures they've got and how they all kind of follow the same model. So this just comes down to they've just not had enough time, so they've tried to repurpose so much stuff that you can just see it very early on in the game. And if you're going to have to be doing that for the entire duration, you're probably going to get bored much quicker than you would do if they had just more stuff to do and more variety to those experiences. The combat in terms of mechanics needs to be tuned to be more interactive and fun. And I think the combat is a Marmite design, to be honest, and it will get a lot of criticism from people for issues that aren't the combat's fault, but more their perspective on what they wanted it to be. And I'm going to try and address this in the best way I can. Some people want to criticize something for not what it is or what it's trying to be, but they for what they want it to be. And that's what I see going on here. There are, of course, legit criticisms about what New World's combat is trying to be. But you do have to wade through like what people want it to be versus what it's actually trying to be and which one has merit and which one doesn't. So New World wants to have deliberate combat. It wants you to have a few abilities, but mostly use your game knowledge, your aim, your positioning, decision making and basic attacks to fight enemies, including other players. For that, the combat is on the right track, but obviously this will not be everyone's cup of tea. Some people are going to hate the combat because of this goal, and they want abilities to be spammable and have a lot of abilities like they're playing World of Warcraft. Understandably, different strokes for different folk. But that's not what they're trying to do, and it's basically like going into McDonald's and then complaining their salad's not very good. It's not what they're known for. That being said, the combat they've gone for is implemented in a fairly poor manner. I'm into the idea of what they want it to be, but they've just not done it well enough to be fit for purpose. It's good on surface level, uh, it can feel a little bit clunky, but for me, I can sort of see the light at the end of the tunnel. You get glimpses of greatness with this. If the server worked better and the desync and things like that weren't as much of an issue, it would probably feel closer to what you'd want it to be. You can see glimpses of the combat being great, but it, it just needs more polish and perhaps a few changes to make it feel more fluid. If the AI of the monsters got better, the variety of the monsters got better, and the servers weren't shitting themselves to death, this probably would be a bit of a different experience, but we will have to wait and see uh, how it how it feels once they get those problems under wraps. So the biggest issue besides these are, of course, factions. This is the elephant in the room I've been pointing at and shouting, guys, do you see that fucking elephant for the last two years since they introduced factions? And if you ever looked at this system and thought it was fit for purpose, I hope you've managed to see what it looks like after a couple of weeks of public live environment of gameplay. It simply doesn't work for what they want it to be. One faction almost always takes over and is a dominant force. And then the idea beyond that point of factions existing is irrelevant. It just doesn't work for what they want it to be in any way at all. I've said it many times. My solution originally would have been to just rip out the faction system and have it be player-driven guilds and alliances with a political aspect that isn't massively shaped by game-implemented systems, give players that sandboxy freedom that you originally had, but not for the entire game, of course. But I'm not sure if they've gone too far now with the focus on open world PvP being toggleable with faction versus faction. 
that it could make flagging up being too unforgiving for what they want it to be, seeing as almost everyone would be an enemy. So I'm not really sure what my suggestion would be here, to be honest, but the current faction issues are something I can tell you for 100% fact, are going to cause the game long-term problems. And it's a problem that if the game launches this way, it will be really hard to fix it because you'll be taking things away from some players uh, in the middle of the game being live and what should have been persistent. So this is something they need to fix absolutely 100% before this gets launched. I've got to say, maybe this isn't a big problem for other people, but I do think it's a symptom of what New World is and how little time they've had to sort things out. No swimming in 2021, despite having water. It plays out kind of like a sad movie, to be honest. You're just walking along the beach, you press your map, you see your faction's got no control over the entire map, and then you just think, fuck it. You start having a slow walk into the water, it gets up to your knees, you move a little bit slower. It gets up to your waist, you move even slower. And then it goes over your head and you just walk slowly into oblivion shortly after you feel like you're in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, walking on the ocean floor, except in that movie you're a skeleton who doesn't need to breathe. And in this game you just die like a fucking idiot. It, it's just silly. And that brings me to another point I banged on for over a year now. Traversing the game is fun and interesting. It's one of the best parts of the game, honestly. Until it isn't, until it becomes a chore. They've managed to turn the best aspect of the game, being out in the world, into a bit of a cock. It's really fun to run around, see new stuff, get to the top of that cliff for the first time, look around at this beautiful scenery and see the little new world people running around and doing things. But then after you've been doing that for 50 hours, 100 hours, and your next quest is run in that direction for 45 minutes and be given three lines of story text and then told to run all the way back. It actually feels like you're being punished at the Amazon Fulfillment Center for not clearing out your piss bottles on your own time. I'm not sure what I did wrong to deserve this treatment, but I must have done something to be punished in such a manner. Having fast travel in a game where your main selling point is the world is not something I can really understand, but then when you add in that you don't have mounts at launch, it seems like a massive oversight. It seems like movement in this game is tedious on purpose. That being said, I absolutely love this game. Despite all these issues I've listed, it might seem like they're deal breakers and they're big, huge, glaring problems, which they are. But that's just a testament to what New World could be and the glimpses of greatness that you can see within this and why I'm passionate about trying to change it as much as possible so it can be the best game it possibly can. Because when you play this game, if you are into the idea of it, it's very clear that it can be really good and you can see that they're almost there. And I do want to make this very clear since some people tend to think I hate this game for whatever reason because I've been very critical about the development of the game, which I would think most of those points have been vindicated by this stage. The reason I am so critical of the game is because I see the massive potential it has, because I love the core ideas of what the game is, and I've played it and I really like it, and how it feels to be in this game, be in this world, get lost in it, play it like an MMO. So there's no reason to wait until the game launches to talk about problems. There's no reason to not talk about things that you foresee as issues like I've done in this and other videos because at the end of the day, if this game launches with some of these issues present, it will damage the game's success for years to come. And let's be realistic, guys. Not every game gets a Realm Reborn scenario where they come back, have one of the greatest MMO comeback stories in history, and have four expansions of growing year-on-year -year success just think about this, guys. This is Amazon. They're a very large company, as I'm sure you're aware, and their gaming division so far has been an abject failure, a bottomless pit of money. If this game launches and it isn't good, if it does really badly, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that they cancel this. They've cancelled so many games already. Go look at when they tried to make their own mobile phones and things like that. Cancelling projects for Amazon is not that big of a deal. So I want to see the game do well because I want to see other companies come in and do the same thing and make more games and experiences for us to enjoy. Now, there's obviously a bunch of other issues with the game. These are just the main ones I came up with while writing this video. And of course, this was a mostly critical video. Uh, there are things I could wax lyrical about, the game being amazing and things I really enjoyed. But it doesn't really help the game at all, does it? Because I can say I like the game, it doesn't impact you that much. Other than giving you a little bit of sugar with the medicine of being a very critical video. But I don't really think we need to do that, to be honest. Hopefully they get this game right. I don't know if this is enough time. I don't think it is. But we'll see in a month and a half's time if they do another test or something. How close they are. We'll follow the updates. I'm disappointed that I'm not going to be playing later this month, but I still can't wait to play the game. I ultimately understand it's for the best. This is what they need to make it an experience that will satisfy those of us who enjoy what it is currently, even more so than we already do. Or at least that's the hope, right? That we get the best game we possibly can. And it seems like the developers and the people in charge of this project are trying to do exactly that and deliver us what we what we want. And I want to take a chance to give the developers some credit because they've probably been working to some pretty brutal deadlines for turning a game around a completely 180 
from almost an entirely different genre where almost nothing was reusable in under two years. So they've done a really good job on that. Thank you as always for watching. Interact with this video to help me out in the algorithm because that is all free to do and helps me out tremendously. Drop a like on the video, leave a comment as well if you want to be a top lad. And also subscribe to my channel, 100k subs video coming soon. Just help me get there first and you can be a part of something magical. You'll get absolutely nothing back for it, apart from obviously my gratitude. But you can feel good about yourself knowing you helped me out get into a massive milestone. Check out the links in the video description, Twitch, Twitter, Patreon and Discord. Hopefully I will see you all on the next one. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.